Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Taxi! Taxi! Personally, lady, the name is Louie, but... Please hurry. Okay, but where to? I don't care. You don't... Uh, I don't like to mention this, lady, but I think you mislaid your groom. What? Of course, a girl will get married. She's kind of excited. Maybe she forgets a little something here and there, but lady, not your husband. I'm not married. Look, you're all dressed up like your bride. You come running out of that church. They was having a wedding there. They thought they were, but... Oh, oh I want Jimmy. Look, please, lady, don't, don't, don't cry. If I had Jimmy, I'd give him to you. Who's Jimmy? I love him, and we were going to get married, and I went to the church, and everybody was there except... Except... Jimmy. Yes. Uh-huh. I called everywhere. I know something terrible must have happened to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> For a girl in your position, you know what I think you need? What? A saint. Uh, Mr. Templer, I hope you don't mind our barging in like this. Of course not, Louie. But you see, this here is... Uh, oh. I'm Carol Blair. Uh-huh, Miss Blair. But by this time, she's supposed to have been Mrs... Snyder. Yeah, but she ain't on account of Mr. Snyder. Didn't show up at the altar. So, <laughs> Miss Blair, um, please sit down. Thank you. Uh, here, have a handkerchief. I don't want a handkerchief. I want Jimmy. Well, I don't have Jimmy. I might perhaps try to find him. Oh, Mr. Jimmy. Whether I can or not is something else again. However, have you thought of the possibility that he might have changed his mind about matrimony? Oh, no, he wouldn't have. He loves me. Well, uh... Mr. Templer, there's nothing that could have kept Jimmy from marrying me. Nothing except death. Thank you for bringing me home, Mr. Templer. You're very welcome, Carol. I'm sorry I cried so much. Well, I'll call you as soon as I have any news. Good night. Yeah. Miss Blair lives in a in a very mansion, that mansion. Mm, so she does. Well, let's go, Louie. Okay. Where to? James Snyder's apartment. Uh-huh. You think maybe he overslept? I doubt it. Hey, Mr. Templer, I read a book once. Sure, I wouldn't brood about it, Louie. No, listen. In this here book, a girl's fellow don't show up to marry her on account of he's dead. You know, on account of somebody killed him? Oh, well, that would explain why he's dead, all right. <laughs> yeah, so the girl says zounds. In those days, girls used to say zounds. Uh, that ain't what Miss Carol Blair said. Well, I guess she didn't read the book. Well, probably too busy clipping her coupon. Oh, she's loaded, huh? She is loaded. Well, money and everything. Hmm, I wonder if that's what James Snyder thought. Huh? Oh, yeah, Miss Blair told us he was broke, yeah. Hey, I got the solution. Yes, Louie? Yeah, maybe he got a job. Now, this here is a, a very fancy type hallway, Mr. Temple. So it is. Gaudy, but not neat. One C, one C. Mm, yes, here it is. How can a guy with no dough afford to live here? Well, we'll ask him if he answers that doorbell. Yeah. Hey, he's in. Hello. Ooh. Except he's a she. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, may we come in? All right. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Templer. Maybe she's why Snyder didn't show up. I think we stop here, no? Yes, uh, uh, Miss... Uh... I am Marie. Oh, Marie. Uh, well, this is Louis. Hello. Yeah, and I'm Simon Templer. Ah, you are the same. <laughs> I'm afraid I am. Uh, spending the winter here? In this apartment? <laughs> For right now, I am reading the book, you see. Hmm, book on American history. You're a student. What do you think? I think you graduated. Uh, say, uh, why the book, then? Well, I'm not so long in this country, and 
I wish to learn about... The American people? American men. Oh, they're not that different from Frenchmen. Maybe so, but it's the little difference that counts, hmm? <laughs> Perhaps. You know, there are better ways of learning than from books. Uh, why don't you ask Jimmy? He is out. He is? Yes. He's marrying himself. <laughs> oh, it is not right what I'm saying. He's marrying a girl. Yeah, that's more usual. You don't mind? I do not mind. Well, sometimes close friends of the groom do. They say things like, uh, what on earth does he see in her? But I am knowing what he sees in her. Be careful. One million dollars is not bad. He's fine. Well, that is, Carol is a very pretty girl, too, despite her million dollars. Who cares? <laughs> of course, you'll probably laugh and laugh and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, are you Jimmy's sister? Oh. Yeah, I thought so. But if you're not his sister, you must be... Uh, you look very pretty in red, Simon, but it is not necessary to blush. I am Jimmy's... Whoop, Kitty, it's time for bed. Wife. You said wife? Wife. Excuse me, huh? Hello? Huh? He's not here. Monsieur Templer is here. Goodbye. Was the doorman. I was saying... You said you were Jimmy's wife. It's true. Well, then if he'd married Carol, it would have also been bigamy. Ah, uh, we were divorced in Mexico last year. Not his wife. I am fine. The lawyers say divorce not so good. So now, Jimmy, you marry a rich girl? Maybe Jimmy gives me a big present, hmm? Big present, huh? There's another name for it. Is so? Is so. The other name is blackmail. You are a funny man. I haven't been trying. Maybe you go away now, huh? Mary, hmm? I have news for you. What kind of news? Jimmy didn't show up at the altar. You make the joke once more. No joke. He's terrible. Which means that Jimmy hasn't married that million dollars yet. I think of the poor girl who waits at the altar. Almost I cry for her. Your eyes are dry. I said almost. Goodbye. You want to be alone? From you, yes. Goodbye also to you. Hmm? Oh, Oh, thanks for remembering me in time to say goodbye, yeah, Mr. Templer. We're leaving, Louis. Except, uh, Marie, if you happen to run into Jimmy... Yes? Advise him to be very careful. So? To date, he's left one woman at the altar, another in his apartment. <laughs> He'd be safer juggling dynamite. About Marie's character, I got nothing to say. But about her figure... Louis... I also got nothing to say. <laughs> but, oh, I can dream. Hey, it's dark. Yeah, it usually is at this time of night. I know, but it don't hurt to mention it. Back to the cab? Uh, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. Hey, you Templar? Huh? Me? Yeah. Who wants to know? Who's asking you? You are? So figure it out. All right. You got a pencil and paper, maybe? Oh, wise guy. If you don't mind my intruding, I'm Simon Templer. Well, thanks for telling me, silly. <laughs> hey, you can't. I did. Now, don't, don't move too quick. Him I gave the butt, but it's you I'm pointing the business in. Get in the car. Not just yet. If you've hurt Louie... You want to get shot? Not especially. But first, I'm going to look at Louie. Oh, he's unconscious. Hey, what was the idea? Well, all I wanted was you, so let's get going, huh? But, Louie... From what I gave him, he'll wake up, but you won't if you don't get in the car. Oh, very well. Your name would be, um... Dugan. Dugan. Yeah, you already know mine. Where are we going? That's what you're going to tell me. I am? Yeah. Because we're on our way to visit Jimmy Snyder. Yeah, you've told me. Just so happens his uh, present address slips my mind, so... Give, huh? Or else? No, no. Tonight we don't play. Tonight it's for keeps. Take me to Snyder. Nobody likes to die. This is where you live, huh? Yeah, not quite yet. Hallways are so drafty. Huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Snyder's in your apartment? Yeah, we'll be inside in a moment. Hold it. Hold what? Shut up. Okay. Move slow, straight ahead. You, uh, mean now you've cased the joint? I mean, I wanted to get that light on. Now, uh, Templer. Yes? 
I don't see Snyder. Hey, you know, now that you mention it, I don't see him either. Hey, you could overdo that light stuff. You really think so? Where is he? I don't know. But he might be along at any moment. Yeah? Why not? How would you like a slap in the eye? Put your gun down and try it. Why, Careful. you... Careful. Besides, would Marie approve of your language? <laughs> not to mention your tactics. Well, she don't have to. I'm the one who gives the orders and... Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, for what? Telling me that you're the person who spoke to her over the phone a little while ago, back at Snyder's apartment. It explains how you happen to know I was there. Forget it. Now, what I want to know is when is Snyder going to show here? Well, of course, he may have mislaid his timetable. Yeah. Or perhaps even his life. Templer. Yes? I'm beginning to think that Snyder maybe ain't going to show. Well, in the beginning, it shows promise. In time, you may have lots of little thoughts all your very you own. You said that... said he might be along. I offered no guarantees. Nobody's offered a guarantee on your life. From sheer oversight. You could be playing me for a dope. Oh, good heavens, no. Are you a dope? Where's Snyder? Well, men who have just been married usually spend the time immediately thereafter. No, no, no. He ducked the church. Oh, that's interesting. But how did you know? I know. Something else, however, that you don't know. What's that? The door behind you has just been sneaked open very, very softly. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I amuse you? <laughs> you kill me. You're so funny. You exaggerate. I'm not the one who may kill you. There's a revolver barrel poking its snout around the edge of that door. Point of it's aimed at you. Well, I don't take my eyes off you, mister. I don't suppose there's anything I could say that would stop that little stranger from shooting, whoever he or she is. I do dislike having my home used as a shooting gallery, though. Neighbors complain. So, Mr. Dugan, would you mind going away and being shot someplace else? I am staying right here. And... Oh, uh, Get out of my way. No, you... Oh, you fool. I want to go after whoever shot you. No, that's a uh, trick. It's some kind of trick. You moving up. I'll... Uh. Lieutenant Archer, homicide. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Simon Temple. Uh, Lieutenant Archer just grabbed his Nash for a quick trip to the upper Amazon. <laughs> Lieutenant Archer hasn't got a Nash. He's doing it the hard way. Good night. Lieutenant. Yeah? Look, stop gnashing your teeth and guess what I've got. I wouldn't want it. I'm a married man. His name used to be Dugan, Anthony Dugan. I don't like him. Someone else didn't like him harder. So now he's dead. Where? My apartment. Got the killer there, too? I'm sorry, no. Well, get in touch with me when you do. All right, Lieutenant. I'll be right down, Simon. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't make a pretty corpse. He makes a very dead one, though. Friend of yours? Lieutenant, neither of us really care. Yeah, I... Company, Simon. Who? Oh, Louie. Louie, he says. That's what he said. Louie, you're not hurt. No. No, in my family, everybody goes around with two heads. Well, there was nothing I could do. I... Hang out with the saint and see Johns Hopkins from a bottle. <laughs> Mr. Temple, where is that hooligan? I'm gonna... I... That's him? Yes, Louie. But he ain't, he ain't breathing. No, Louis. Oh. Lieutenant. Yeah? Louis and I have an errand. You mind our leaving? Thanks for asking. So long. Goodbye. Louis. Coming. But to where? I think perhaps it's time we visited Carol Blair. Uh-huh. You think maybe she needs help? Help? Or an alibi? Looks like the mansion is all closed up for the night. I hope not. Maybe she's asleep, huh? Well, she is. She hasn't read the right books. A woman who's just been left at the altar never sleeps. It's a matter they don't get sleep. I have nothing but nothing to say to the press. Who is he? I don't know. To me, he looks like an outfielder. From left field, I might add. Louis, Louis. I uh, beg your pardon. You, sir, would be... Uh... Theobald A. Blair. Uh, what does the A stand for? Artaxerxes. Uh, you may make all the jokes after I shut the door. Good night. We are coming in, Mr. Blair. Mm. Thank you. Pushing type. Ancho. Only when necessary. You are Carol's father? Uncle, young man. Uncle. And who are you? Simon Templer. Hmm. This is Louis. Hmm? Tonight everybody goes, hmm? Why does he have to use a question mark for me? 
Your niece asked me to help her, Mr. Blair. Carol is a young idiot. Youth has no monopoly on idiocy. It, uh, I'm almost squirrel. Something that hasn't happened to me in years. How about an offer of employment? The last one I received was in the early 30s. Since then, no one's been vulgar enough to... Uh, <clears throat> that is hardly your concern, is it? It might be. Uh, by the way, Marie sends her love. Good heavens, sir. Not here. I beg your pardon? Well, we're men of the world, true, but still... Then you knew Jimmy was married? I, uh... Would you like a spot of something? True. I'm afraid we're temporarily out of that commodity. Dugan is dead, Mr. Blair. Indeed? How pleasant to discover that thugs like him are mortal. Were you the one who tested his mortality? Oh, he was murdered, huh? Mm. No doubt whoever murdered him did so with the best of intentions. It wasn't I, however. You haven't asked me where Jimmy is. You haven't implied that you know. Do you? No. Do you want to know? Of course I do. In order to test his mortality? Nonsense. I wanted Jimmy to marry Carol. Wanted it very badly. Uncle, I heard... Oh, Mr. Templer. Yeah, and Louie. I'm keeping the franchise open. Hello, Louie. Hello. I hope you weren't asleep. Oh, no, I couldn't. Uh, Simon, have you found Jimmy? No, I did find Marie, however. Who... Who is Marie? <laughs> Uncle Theobo can tell you, probably with more details than I would know. Uncle? Uh, she, uh... <clears throat> well, that is, she used to be, uh... Well, friendly with Jimmy at one time. Friendly? Well, yes, you might say that. As a matter of fact, she carried it to the extent of marrying him. Oh, no. Uncle, you're joking. Now, 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 my dear. Perhaps you'd uh, better lie down. Uncle, I've warned you time and time again. I'm not a child. I never thought you were. I always... Oh, Mr. Templer, it isn't true, is it? That Jimmy was married? I'm afraid it is. But it can't be. Otherwise, why would he have... have... Been ready to marry you? But he was under the impression that he'd been divorced from his first wife. Oh. And the divorce wasn't any good? So it seems. Then... Then Jimmy did love me. Jimmy would be the best one to answer that. Which reminds me, uh, Louie and I have another errand to perform. What errand? But I can't tell as yet whether it would be a matter for the police or for the medical examiner. The temple, you're excited. Worried. What about Marie? Yeah, that's why we're ringing your doorbell. Mm, no answer. Locked. I don't like that. It's not much of a lock. Don't look now, but you just ruined that lock. It's not important. What is important is... Oh. Ooh, Marie. Yes. Blood on her nightgown. She's dead. She was shot, huh? Yes, yeah, close range. Trail of blood leads from the couch there to this overturned end table. You mean she crawled after Whoever she... shot her left her for dead at the couch... She wasn't quite dead. She fell to the floor, managed to reach the end table, knocked it over. Yeah, and, and started to read a magazine or something, because there's one right under her head. Not read. No? Actually, she tore a page out. That's all she was able to do. No writing on it? No, which means... Let's see. One side's the back cover. The other's a full-page advertisement for Hamilton watches. Hmm. Maybe she wanted to know what time it was. It's a bad joke, but I don't feel good. She was evidently trying to tell us something with that ad. Something about her murderer. Hey, maybe the guy who shot her was a watchmaker, huh? Yeah, possibly that. More obviously that his name was Hamilton. But yeah. uh, so far as we know, there's been no Hamilton connected with the case. And it would be stretching coincidence too far anyway. A ready-made clue like that. No. <laughs> well, I'll have to wait. Are you calling the cops? Mm, they can wait, too. I'm calling the Blairs. You want to let Carol know her husband is now a widower? I want to find out who's home. Hello? Carol, Simon Templer. Simon, you found Jimmy? Not exactly. Carol, is your uncle in? No, he went for a walk. In the park, he was upset. So... Thanks, Carol. Goodbye. Come on, Louie. Where are we going? We're upset, too. So let's make it the park. This here just happens to be a very, uh, very dark part. Mm. No sign of Uncle Theobald. Mr. Templer, you think there's something phony about him taking a walk this time of night? Phony? Hmm, not necessarily. Let's call it dangerous. No, I'm nervous. Let's not. Maybe, uh, maybe he used to be a watchmaker. Mm, that's possible. Mr. Templer, you know, I just thought of something else. You kind of stopped looking for Jimmy Snyder. 
You think it's it's hopeless? I don't know. Other things to worry about first. The Snyder, if he's still alive... You wouldn't bet on that, huh? Hey, look. Up ahead by the side of the road. Yeah, Theobald. He's waiting for the traffic lights to change. There's not many cars are driving around through the park this time of night, though. But there is one parked down the road a bit. Come on. Yeah? yeah. The lights change. He's stopping the cross. There's the car. Theobald! Theobald! He ain't heard you. He's out on the roadway. Theobald! The car hit him. No lights, no lights in play type. Is he dead? No. Car just sideswiping. Oh, hey, Theobald. Hello. There? Bad driving. Hmm? No, no, no. Murderous driving. That car tried to kill you. Theobald, we'll get an ambulance for you. You'll be all right, but look, I've got to know something. Do you have a place of your own besides Carol's house? I... Oh, yes. I keep a small room. Shabby vanity of mine. But it belongs to me. Where is it? 19 Terrace Place. Apartment 3. Have fun, then. <laughs> oh. oh, he's fainted. Billy, go get help for him. I'll wait till you get back, and then... Yeah? And then we'll remember the forgotten man. <laughs> Here ain't a very elegant dump. Louis, I'm worried. About who's killing everybody? No, I think that's fairly clear. Oh, you speak for yourself, John. But Mary's dying action, it puzzles me. That ad for watches, it seems to point nowhere. It just adds an unnecessary complication. To me, all complications are unnecessary. You know, Mr. Templer, maybe what you need is a secretary. A what? All I said was a secretary. Louis, I love you. What? Look, this is my busy weekend, please. Here's apartment three. This is where he hangs out when he ain't being rich. Hey? Yeah. Yeah, from back there. It's this closet. Oh, look now, but that there must be Jimmy Snyder all tied up and gagged. You're quite right, Louie. I better untie him. No, Louie. Huh? You better make a phone call. Who to? The police. Mr. Snyder can untie himself without too much difficulty, I suspect. Uh, hey, hey, he's got a hand for I rather thought he would. I'll take that gun and... Oh. You, you, you felt you had to do that? Of course. He wasn't tied up very good. No. He... You, but... All right, I'll phone the police. Yeah, but what'll I tell him? To come and pick up Mr. James Snyder, vanishing bridegroom and murderer. Simon, I don't understand. How could it have been Jimmy? Well, he was married to Marie. Marie and her happy little trigger man, Dugan, were preparing to blackmail him as soon as he'd married you, Cal. Jimmy didn't care for the program, and so... So he killed him. Right, Louie. Oh. Your uncle also knew, so that meant that he, too, would have to die. But Jimmy tried to arrange it so that Theobald's death would seem to be an accident. After he'd ran him down in the park, he went to Theobald's apartment and tied himself up. He knew someone would find him there shortly. And everybody would have thought that uncle had killed Marie and Dugan... Simon, however did you know? Marie. She was murdered in her living room. She was wearing a nightgown at the time. It's hardly likely she would have received any ordinary visitor in that state. Yeah, except her husband, Jimmy. Uh, right, Louie. Only now look, what's the business with the watch ad? Well, we know that Marie dying tore a page out of a magazine. Obviously because that page contained an indication of who had killed her. Wait a minute. All that page contained was an ad for Hamilton watches. Oh, you're forgetting something, Louie. Yeah? What was Marie doing the first time that we met her? She was, uh... Oh, yeah, she was reading a book. About? Uh, uh... American history. Mm Mm-hmm. I remembered that. And then when you mentioned the word secretary... Yeah, this I mentioned, all right. I knew whom she'd named as her murderer. Uh Uh-huh. I still don't know. Louie. Yeah? Look, in American history, who was Alexander Hamilton? Oh, oh, but the Pilgrim Father. No. Pilgrim Son? Louis. Well, Alexander Hamilton was the first Secretary of the Treasury. Uh huh. So? So, who's the Secretary of the Treasury today? Oh, well, that's a guy named the. Uh, uh, wait a minute, let me look at a dollar bill. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And Jimmy Snyder was a suspect. <laughs> so it goes to show people ought to read American history. You know. Marie was awfully bright. 
I'm not. I feel terrible, Simon. You needn't, Carol. You'll get over, Jimmy. Do you think so, Simon? How? Well, uh... Um... Uh, Louis. Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, Mr. Temple? Uh, please go take a cab. Hmm? You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, from the past we have received a heritage, our American heritage, and it consists of many things. It's an ideal and a way of life. It's everything America stands for, our heritage. We can repay the past only by using our heritage well today, by taking pride in the most complete expression of individual liberties, civil rights, and personal dignity. And by doing so, we'll be guaranteeing our future. For we have learned from history that unused freedom has a habit of slipping away. Of course, using our freedom makes certain demands upon us. But to the people of many countries today, these demands would constitute a gift beyond price. They mean voting in an informed way, serving on juries, taking an interest and in having a voice in all the affairs of the community, the state, and the nation. All this preserves our heritage by exercising it. And by making our form of government work better at home, we strengthen democracy everywhere. We provide an example of free people governing themselves through a free government, a dynamic example of man's finest ideals at work. To every American, then, falls the task of protecting our heritage. For freedom is everybody's job. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. This script of the saint was written by Louis Vitti. In our cast, you heard Viola Vaughn as Marie and Sharon Douglas as Carol. Sheldon Leonard was Dugan, Ted Osborne, Uncle Theobald, Frank Gerstle was Lieutenant Archer. Louis is played by Larry Dotkin. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Errol Flynn and Michelin and Prell in William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are now on sale at all newsstands. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. NBC.